Welcome everybody to discussion with the fashion masters. My name is Deanna Hansen. I'm a certified athletic therapist and the founder of fluid isometrics and block therapy. And I am being joined by my nephew, Quinn Castellane, a lead block therapist and the vice president of block therapy and our guest, Edna Guzman, one of our first block therapists. Welcome Edna. So happy to have mm. you here. So we, I just want to give a little bit of uh, background. Quinn and I in February were in Puerto Rico visiting Edna and her husband Isaiah and our Spanish community and we had an absolutely epic epic adventure. We did we did things we've never done before. We even jumped out of a plane and Edna and I were the first to <laughs> jump. It was so exciting and incredible. But anyway, um, I reached out or sorry, Edna reached out to me about three years ago because she had scoliosis. So I'm gonna pass it over to Edna so she can tell her story, um, share what led her to us and some of the amazing results that she's had. Hi, Anna. Sure. Hi. Welcome, everybody. I'm so uh, grateful and blessed to be here. Just joining you from all from this beautiful island. It's nice and sunny and hot down here today. And we've been in quarantine for about uh, maybe 40 days, 35 days anyway. So I'm glad to be uh, joining you all from all different parts of the world. And hopefully we can explore together and, and hear and listen all this blessing that uh, the block therapy has uh, brought to my life. So actually, let me give you a little history about myself. Um, I learned that I had scoliosis when I was about 10 years. Uh, my parents noticed one shoulder higher than the other, and they took me for some x-rays and doctor's appointments and everything. So I had a scoliosis when I was like 10 years old, or at least they discovered that. So I grew up uh, just watching that part of my life, and actually, it was an S-shape, minor, then I just came on a lawn, went to college, did all my, um, finished all my studies and everything. And actually it never really bothered me until I started working, maybe towards when I was in the late twenties, I started feeling more aches and pains towards the lower body. And especially if I was standing too long. One thing that I have to mention is I have little or none arch on my feet. So I, I was called to have flat feet, but I really didn't even notice that that was creating some shifting around and not even helping the scoliosis part. So I'm not sure what started first, the flat feet or the scoliosis or both together combined. Now that I know more about the fascia, I can tell you a little story afterwards. But then anyway, I kept growing and growing and um, my mom told me, took me, took me to uh, this chiropractor when I was 18 years old. So I, that became my, my main doctor. I will see him every three months. Uh, and then it became like a monthly basis and eventually became like a bi-monthly basis and later a weekly basis. Suddenly when I was like about uh, 30 years old, I developed spondylolisthesis with my L5 was moving around. The L5 was just moving a little bit and that really created a lot of pain and a lot of pressure in the lumbar area. So uh, I kept going, I'm very determined, kept working. And something that I have to mention is that I, in the last 20 years, I work in my feet standing. My professional work is an um, organization and development trainer. I'm a coach. So I spend most of my time uh, teaching and training people in, in corporate level. So by the time I will get home, I will, it will be a killer between my feet and my knees and more towards my hips, a lot of pain in my hips and my lower back. And about five years ago, the situation got really, really bad. Uh, I just couldn't help it to be standing. So I just developed, I never really took medications at all. So I just tried to bear with it. I was just doing exercising and I was just stretching. And suddenly, I, the only thing that got me going was that I purchased a high chair. So I would bring my high chair to the classroom, but still, it was very exhausting. Now, my doctor, remember that I mentioned that I was with my doctor since I was 18 and now I'm in the 50s. He came and he wanted me to do some x-rays. And I, honestly, I was just in denial. I didn't want to see the x-rays because I knew it was going really down the hill. So the last time that I had taken x-ray was about 10 years ago. So he wanted to compare. So he would tell me and I was like, ah, oh, whatever. So finally, I decided to do some more text tests, x-rays, and Yes, we discovered scoliosis was in a really high rise now. It was closing uh, 40 degrees, about 37 degrees as shape, really bad. And towards the end, the spine in the lumbar area where my spondylolisthesis used to be, that I had a surgery. I just want to make sure that everybody knows that I, had, I have a surgery in the back, L4 and L5 fused. 
that was 22 years ago. They fused with bones from the hip. That area was very compressed and had developed all kinds of things in that area from um, arthritis in that area, inflammation. So he looked at me for the first time, my doctor, and he looked at me and he said, can I just take picture? Because I don't believe how you can stand and walk because the situation is really bad. Can I just take picture? Because I want to use those for me to teach. And then he looked at me and he said, you should consider seriously retire. Because if you go to the social security, if you go uh, with the pictures, no explanation, you will get a full uh, pension, disability pension. So I remember looking at him and I just looked at him and I just said to him something that I don't know, it came out of, my, out of the blue. And I said to him, you know what? And I just pointed to the x-rays. I said, those are my x-rays, but they don't define me. They don't define who I am. So he looked at me like I was crazy and I left thinking there has to be something else that I'm missing. There's a missing link that I don't understand and I'm not going to retire and I'm not just going to go and feel sorry about myself. So I kept driving, went back to home and I started looking into YouTube, scoliosis, scoliosis. Within three days, I found this video from one of the participants that had gone to Diana for scoliosis and I watched this video and in the bottom says fluid isometrics. And knowing me that I'm very determined, go, 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 go. I just wrote to Diana and called her and they just made an appointment. And that was three years ago. And that was the best, one of the best days of my life because Diana was able to talk to me kind of quick and the block was in the way. Two days later, I was in the block. Now, one thing though, since I'm, I'm a person, I'm very determined and I'm like things very quick, the microwave thing, like things really quick. Going to, I thought I was just going to be in the block for a week. And I even asked her, is this something that I need to do? Because I was ready to jump in the plane and go to Canada. And then she said, uh, just let me get you the block. Let me get you the block, take the pictures. She didn't really explain much about that. <laughs> so the block came. And then I started learning, this is not a quick fix. This is a, a time, a change in life habits. This is a new lifestyle. But I didn't re really realize until I got into the blog. I think maybe with that week, I said, hmm, this is not something that you eat and you do and you become. This is more of learning to cope within yourself, learning about who you are, embracing your own a physical, mental, your soul, and devoting to a healthier uh, being. So the minute, then after a week, I realized being in the block, especially being in the block and sensing who I was, seeing um, different scenarios of my life, crying in the, in the block, forgiving myself, forgiving others, that I realized I had found my missing link. I had found what I was dreaming and looking for. Um, it's just a benefit. I felt relief immediately. I felt no more pain within a few days. But of course, those changes are so good for me because I was able to breathe, I was able to be more flexible, and I just stopped doing all kinds of exercise. I stopped running, I stopped doing lifting weights, I just devoted myself to the walk. And then I did stretching, yoga stretching more. Then I realized, this is a life changer. I'm going to change my whole body, and I'm going to change the way I perceive myself. It was working in my self-esteem. It was more into embracing who I was, and then within a few months, I decided that if I was doing so well, other people needed to know that. And being back home that we speak Spanish, English is our second language. Not everybody can speak English. I figured we need to do this. We need to do this in Spanish. So here I am. I'm the first teacher, Spanish speaking teacher. And we just translated, I translated the whole BTU in Spanish. Well, so here you are. Wow, Edna. I, I was getting chills as you were talking because you, you really explained it so well how this, this really is a profound shift of your entire way to live, how you perceive life in general. And that's what I love about it because as you're diving into this block and you're letting it sink through those layers, you start communicating with parts of yourself that you have probably not even ever touched before. And it really opens the door to so many aha moments in your life and creative awareness. And it's, it's really all about creating space. And you know, that, that's what this is about. And when we're looking at a body, 
that has been impacted with injury, surgery, time in general, what we're ultimately losing is space in the body. So when we start putting that space in and opening up that tissue, we're letting go of past ideas about ourselves, past memories, past emotion, as well as all of the garbage that we accumulate in our body and ourselves. So it's, it's truly this beautiful cleaning process. And I do remember when you, probably within a couple of weeks after you had started, you had reached out to me and, and you were so excited because your menopausal symptoms were improving. And that was the first thing that I remember you said to me is like, oh my gosh, I need, I need to join this teacher program because change is happening so fast. So um, I know now you've taught so many people. Do you have any um, incredible stories that you'd like to share from others sure, that you've sure. worked with? Sure. Um, yes, I have many from others, but something else that I just discovered within myself, because one thing though, is I feel about this is you are the best advocate. Your testimony speak by, by yourself. Uh, I don't, when I just tell, tell people about the blog, I just said, listen, I just try it. I, I just want to share you what I have experienced. And if I have, you can experience even more stuff because we're so different. Bodies are different. Now, remember that I joined because of the scoliosis, but the little that I know is, is I was going to have different advantages. One thing, though, I was just miserable with all the uh, menopause symptoms, the night sweats, the hot flashes, going on and on. And one thing, though, is that my period had already elapsed. And I started in the block, and within weeks, I started again with the period, the whole process. And my doctor, my gen doctor, Jana Collins, he wanted to take... Um, he wanted to do a C-section again and clean the whole area because he had found an eight centimeter um, tumor on the um, uterus. And I said, no, 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 I'm not going to go through the surgery. Let me wait. But then I, listen to me, I was working for the scoliosis. I forgot all about that. And when I jump into the block, I start cleaning, the system start cleaning. And then because of the pelvis was shifting, my pelvis started to shift because I was hyperextending the knees and I, it was bent forward. So the minute I start working and the pelvis start shifting, the whole system got, got cleansed. So I went back to having a period for almost a year. Then I went back to the doctor and they did the whole testing again. And guess what? My eight centimeter tumor was already gone. It only had a little scar, a little tiny, tiny scar. And he looked at me like, oh, I don't know what ever happened here. And I just smiled. I said, well, I know what happened. <laughs> I know what happened. <laughs> so anyway, I went back within a year. And then suddenly I, I migrated back to the menopause. The symptoms are being less, less, less every day. And of course, combined with the breathing, the blog, and learning about foods and learning about myself. Actually, the blog had taught me to be more conscious about my own self. And I didn't have to even ask people around. I just... I had reached my inner wisdom to find and read what would trigger and not trigger my night sweats. And I've been doing so great just listening within myself. The more I breathe in the block, the more I get access to that inner wisdom. So that's very important for me to tell about uh, that because I hear, I see a lot of questions and I hear and I, people ask about questions. So you can meet, start working in something, but the whole system is going to get balanced. And then the other thing that I'm working now that I know is challenging, but it, I, don't, I don't have any rush, is that I'm creating arch in my feet. Because I learned the whole system moves around from the bottom up. So as my feet are, are pronating and less arch, of course I was creating all this uh, spiral movement, creating more pressure in the hips and the lower back. So I'm creating the arch and I just have so much fun now walking barefoot when it's wet and I go back, look back and I see my arch because now I have arch. I have to stop saying that I have flat feet. I have arch. <laughs> so I'm releasing the tibia now. The class, the no class, the cuffs, all things cuff is hell, good hell. <laughs> Especially when you're releasing the tibia from this side. And I, last night I was doing, I'm like, oh my God, it's so intense, less intense than the first time. But then I see myself, I see the more arch, more arch coming along. And I just said, wow, what the heck? This is beautiful pain and I'm all for it. So I'm um, so grateful. No arch, no feet, no legs, no everything. So, and and uh, one thing that I, uh -huh. sorry, sorry, no, you go ahead, you go ahead. 
<laughs> and the last thing I have to mention, girls, wait for your uh, upper chest <laughs> to have your really nice upper chest. <laughs> I'm even walking around with umbra sometimes. I'm like, I can't believe this. I have a lift because as you open your chest, the chest and, and, and uh, shoulder, everything gets back where it's supposed to be. So this is amazing. <laughs> I really enjoy my menopause life with umbra and walking around with my flat feet. So this is awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh. You make me laugh so much. I just love this. So back to that discussion on pain. Can you share if you've had a shifting in how you communi communicate with your pain and what pain actually means to you through this process? Um, yes, pain um, started to be not a miserable part of my life. It started to show where the pain site and the cause site is. One thing is the cause and one thing is the pain. So it started to have meaning. It started to have more... Um, curiosity to find the pain so with an embracing the pain with the joy and embracing it with love because it meant that that area that it was painful needed more attention and in this agenda this Russian that we live we tend to overlook details so the pain for me it had helped me to be more cautious more mindfulness of who I am and more loving and caring, attending more my body and my soul and my mind. So it's, pain is a bigger, the biggest t-shirt that I have. Whatever is pain, it's a place that you have to stop and breathe and find out what it really is telling me. The pain tells you. The pain speaks to you. So we should not be afraid of pain. We should be seeking for it and embracing it and be patient. It's just about being patient and finding ways to manage the cause site. And one thing that I love about the, the whole pain concept is as we are moving into the body with the block, we start to encounter pain that we didn't even know that we had. So um, what's, what's really nice about this too is people get really afraid if you have chronic low back pain and, and everything is really point tender to touch. Some people are afraid to put pressure into that area. And then the nice thing with block therapy is we can create a release of that tension and pain through working in other parts of the body, those cause sites, which is really nice because it teaches people how to approach their pain sites from a distance and start creating a shift in that pain before they even have to get there. So that when they do, the pain is already that much more subsided. Plus you already have a very different communication with your pain and, and with block therapy we, we typically start core rib cage to get the breath strong in the beginning and then we go to the foundation piece so that that's another component that's really sure. nice about this practice is we don't again we, we can just approach the body as a whole so that we're not diving right into where it hurts and as an athletic therapist of course i was trained to work on the pain sites so understanding how we can address those cause sites first and work to the pain is is just a, a kinder way to approach the body when we are afraid of the intensity of the pain that we are experiencing that's right that's right and one thing though is that to be able to effectively use the block the way it's meant to be you need to challenge your beliefs because we've been taught the pain is wrong and we've been taught to drink a pill, do something to get the pain out of your body versus finding the root cause. So this is a completely uh, mind blowing. Uh, we, need to, we need to challenge what we have believed, especially the part that now use ice and use uh, heat because ice compress more. It's heat, it's relieving, it's seeking the pain. We need to be able to challenge our own beliefs. Of course, that's what we've been taught by our parents, by our society, with the good intention. But it's time that we start challenging those. And I love how you talk about, you know, the, the pain, like it, it gets stuck in the body. And we're, when we're starting with a body, we're dealing with a frozen body. And when things are frozen, they're stuck. So pain is literally areas of the body that don't have flow. So when we really start to embrace the breath, embrace the block, embrace the melting, as well as changing the attitude, um, that allows flow to happen so that we can change those mindsets as well as change the actual physical alignment of our cells. And the goal of block therapy is really to put every single one of our cells back into the right alignment, the right position. And as long as those cells are there, there's space. And, and again, it comes back to that space conversation. As long as there's space in the body, 
there's room to drop off all of the nutrients as well as take away all of the byproducts and waste so that that system stays clean and fluid and flexible. And then we can pull life in, but we can also remove everything efficiently. So Quinn, do you have any things you'd like to share about this conversation regarding pain or your experiences? Yeah, there, there's a few things that Edna mentioned, which are really key points that I think we can elaborate on a little bit more because we've seen incredible progress, especially when it comes to working the ankles, the calves, the feet for chronic back pain. Well, really chronic back pain, but also just pain throughout the entire body. And that's something I just want to reinforce because even myself working on um, some of my clients, it, it's so funny because intuitively everybody thinks like, okay, like I understand that like chronic back pain or scoliosis, maybe it's caused from a collapse in like the lower belly. I can see that or like the hip flexor, the adductors, and nobody really believes that the calves can cause chronic back pain. So we did a test and I was blocking his calves every single time I saw him and I was like working on him a little bit more and it was within I think a week and I only saw him twice a week. His chronic back pain he's had for years and years and years and this guy's in his late 40s, his back pain was gone and he's like, Quinn, I don't know what happened. I've tried every therapy, every modality out there. Like it's seriously like 90% gone. And I'm like, okay, this is like, is this a coincidence? So we kept going with it. And then um, it just kept on improving. And then he slowed down a little bit. We reconnected and he's like, ah, my back pain starting to come back a bit. And then we jumped back on the calves and boom, like it was gone so much quicker. And that's another really interesting concept about the fascia system is once you, once you've given it what it needs. So let's say you've released it significantly and then you've taken some time off from doing block therapy or whatever fa fascia practice you're doing and you reconnect to it, it's amazing how fast your body responds. It jumps right back to where that was really, really quickly. Initially, it can take some time because yeah, our tissue, we like to use the term frozen, like it's cold, it's frozen. And the intention of block therapy is to release those fascia adhesions and to create more heat in the body. So when we speak about frozen tissue, again, of course we're saying frozen, not as in like it was in the freezer. A lot of people have actually asked me about that, but it, it's incredible how, um, how fast it can release. And then another concept that you were talking about, Edna, was the um, seeking pain that we're unconsciously aware of. So I, I just wanna reinforce that as well because with block therapy, we don't jump right onto the back. If you have back pain, we never start in the back. And some people will literally relieve their back pain completely without touching their back. And that's a foreign concept. People don't really understand that until you fully give it a try. So being able to, um, again, work all different areas, find which areas are more painful than others because every body is completely unique on how their tissue grips and hold, holds. So we, we've come to realize that the calves, the ankles are probably one of the bigger cause sites, especially for chronic back pain, but every body is still unique. So that's what's so great about block therapy. You don't depend on somebody else. You don't have to go and see necessarily a therapist every week. Again, it's great to go and do that to help get a different perspective, to help accelerate the the results and the progress but block therapy is a self-care practice it's all about you connecting deeper with your body you finding the the cause sites to your pain because everybody's pain as i mentioned is going to be a little bit different and why are we looking for pain that we're unconsciously aware of because those are the cause sites so when you find a really intense area that you've never even brought attention to and you release that, you're gonna start noticing shifts and changes all the way up the chain. And that's just what's so cool. Like the fascia, it's a bit of a mystery system. A lot of people don't know much about it, but Deanna has been working for 40, 50,000 hours in the fascia system. Um, I've been doing block therapy for seven years now, and it blows me away almost every time I do it because it, it never lets me down. Sure. And one sure. of the things that's really great too is when you take control of that pain in your body, it is so empowering because 
you know, so many of us are seeking outside of ourselves for those answers. And if we don't find those answers, it can be extremely debilitating for our psyche. When we start to find those answers within ourselves, suddenly it's not about necessarily being out of pain. It's more about being on the being on the right path. You know, for a lot of us, as long as we know we're on the right path, the end goal is great to reach and to move toward, but it's knowing that you have something that actually works and that will continue to improve your life that is calming and so peaceful to how we live our lives. It's the not knowing that really creates that pain, fear cycle, that response in the body. If you know, we're, we're uncertain about anything, then it leaves us feeling off balance and off center. So um, I, I love that aspect of this. I've been personally going through a healing crisis with my left hip now for over three years. And I know that I've reached an injury that I had when I was seven years old and that I grew around. It was quite a significant injury on my pubic bone. So when I started uncovering those adhesions three years ago, I was pretty aware this was going to be a long journey for me because it's such old scar tissue. And I, I literally grew around that scar tissue. So it, it's really interesting because I'm not concerned about the fact that my left hip still hurts because I'm making progress. What's more important to me is I know I have the solution. It's just a matter of, of putting the time in because it was such a significant injury and you know I grew around it. So there's a lot of work to be undone. So that's just another piece about that whole pain thing. I mean, pain is part of life. And if we try to make our goal to be out of pain in life, you know, that might not be a realistic goal. It's to me more important to understand the value of pain and what is, what is pain really. And pain is really the cells saying, hey, I need something. I'm not getting what I need. I don't have the space to receive the nutrients. I don't have the space to clean the tissue out so that the environment is healthy. So understanding pain in that way makes pain more of a friend. And we can also use that pain as the roadmap in our bodies to go back through time. And sometimes people will say, well, you know, I started blocking and suddenly my knee hurt. Well, it's, it's because of shifting. And if we can not view pain as this scary thing that we need to avoid and numb all the time, then we can view it as a friend that's here to guide and support us and allow us to move forward in a, in a healthier, sustainable life. Agree, agree. And Jenna, you asked me before that what would be in any testimony with my students. I was just so excited about sharing about myself. But I do have <laughs> great testimonies of my students because the minute I started sharing and learning more about the anatomy because I'm, I'm not a science major. I'm more into the industrial engineering, organizational development, coaching. So learning about body and just watching and, and doing assessments. One of the biggest testimonies that I have is this uh, girl that came to my attention with uh, really terrible migraines, like three or four migraines a week, uh, heavy migraines. And when I look at her, I noticed that she had developed a habit from she, when she was a child to walk in the uh, tiptoes. So she was not actually uh, walking with the ankle or the uh, well, that, that part of the, the lateral part of the, of the foot. She was in the tiptoe. So she was bearing all this weight forward. Her pelvis was tilted and she had a very deep arch in the lower back, creating a lot of pressure in the upper side, neck and head. So when I look at her, I said, something here is not right. So I couldn't really figure out I remember sharing the pictures with Diana. I said, Diana, something is weird here. She has a lot of pressure, upper body, and then she has this in, in the waist, the back of the, the waist, really deep. So that was it. Her feet, the way she was walking, was creating this pressure and this constant migraine. And just for her to shift and learn how to walk again, literally walk again, making sure she, she was that 60% of the body was in the heels and doing the blocking, moving back, shifting the pelvis. She started seeing right away immediate relief in their headaches and the mm -hmm. migraines. Right away from three migraines a week down to maybe one or two a month and then noticing what other things she needs.
needed to incorporate, like less stress, um, what triggers food. And guess what? She's now be becoming a teacher. She's one of my faithful students because she believed in the blog because she saw the difference. So that was my major testimony with her. And there are times that I, people call me or send me texts. I have headaches. And I just say, just step into the block. Just place your feet on the block. And like, what? But I have a headache. Just get yourself the block, <laughs> the feet. Just step in and work in your pelvis. Work in, into that area. So you're going to have the benefit upstream. And that is so amazing. It's just amazing how we can look not into the pain site. Where is it coming from? Where is it really shifting? What is the uh, fascia doing in the intent of, of, of protecting? How is it holding the patterns? And that was, that was awesome, being able to help my friend here. And I'm looking forward to be her guidance as she becomes a teacher. And it's kind of like we, if we looked at the, the body being like a car, having a pronated foot is kind of like having a flat tire. And we all know, I mean, how long can we drive around in a car with a flat tire before other things become problematic and try steering a car with a flat tire it's it's challenging or think of the body as a building like if there's an earthquake and you know the foundation shifts everything starts tilting so you know if if we're going to try to fix that top floor of a building when it's the foundation that shifted we're not going to get anywhere so it, it's just being able to look at the body as a whole and really that's what the fascia is all about it's it's this interconnecting tissue that communicates every single cell in the body so we really need to look at the body that way in order to find those solutions so that we can move forward and create that proper foundation to support every cell in proper alignment. And that's the reality. Again, if every cell is in proper alignment, then, then there's space for those cells to be properly fed and clean. And as long as cells are fed and clean, there's no pain, injury, disease, trauma. I mean, it's, it's, it's really that simple in idea um, as well as practice. It's just understanding that, it's not like we can just turn on the breath, lie on the block, and we're going to go back because fascia will grip and adhere to bone with a force of up to 2,000 pounds per square inch. So the further we get away from the heat source, which is the diaphragm, the more frozen that fascia is. So the calves and the feet are, of course, where the fascia is the most frozen onto the bone. So as you've already you know, shared so beautifully, working the pain sites, every time you take a step, your body's going to get pulled back into that negative fascia pattern. So we really do need to address those cause sites to create that full body relief. How are you doing there, Quinn? Do you have any uh, comments or things to share or questions? Or? I'm just looking uh, to see if anybody has any questions. So far, we have some great comments. Uh, yay, Edna, you're such an inspiration. So happy to be seeing this. Love listening to you, Edna. You're an inspiration to others. So Again, like your story, Edna, is, is incredible. And it's, it's really bringing the whole concept of cause sites and pain sites because that is such an important concept to understand because people aren't going to fully understand and believe that right away. It's going to take some time. And for some people, they won't understand it until they actually do it or they actually try sure. it. Um, so again, like it's, it's just really cool to even hear um, some of your clients, some of your patients, their testimonials from migraines because migraines is a huge subject for a lot of people. I've, I used to suffer from migraines when I was really young and they were the most terrible thing ever. You, you can't see at times you, you have to be in a dark room. Like you don't know what's actually causing it. And that's something that I don't really think many people have fully understood or found the solution to migraines. And when you just understand the system as a whole, if there's a flat tire, I love how Deanna brought up that analogy because that's perfect. If there's a flat tire in your system, the entire, the entire body, the entire vehicle is going to be affected. And maybe there's just a little bit less air pressure, but over time, that's going to slowly start affecting everything. And then that's only going to get worse and worse. And then that's going to accumulate faster and have more of that snowball effect. So for you to be sharing again, the pelvis, the feet, jump on the feet, like that's incredible. If people are feeling releases all the way up the head, because that's literally the furthest part from the head is the feet. And that's causing relief in the head. 
And there's times where people are going to doubt it. They're going to have a migraine. They're going to say, no, I'm working my neck. I'm working my temples. I'm working my, my forehead. And don't get me wrong. That can definitely give you that temporary relief, sure. but it's not the solution necessarily. Mm -hmm. So maybe that can help in the moment, but that's not what's going to a prevent it and actually get rid of the migraine. So again, that is a huge subject on its own. And I know a lot of people who have joined block therapy, a lot of instructors now that used to suffer with migraines, mul multiple migraines a week. And now they've reduced it from 40%, 60%. I think some are at 90% completely gone. Some are fully gone. And again, it's, it's because we're addressing the body as a whole. We're not just addressing the pain, which would be the head. Sure, sure. Uh, and Queen, something that I want to add on something that you mentioned before about blocking the back and uh, not even, sometimes you, you can just you create changes without blocking the back. I just want to stress to mm -hmm. people that are watching and will watch eventually, if you're looking for a solution for scoliosis, guess what? I didn't block my back until maybe 18 or 17 months after because I was just, all you need to do is decompress the core. Every day, every day I will work in the core of the court and I will take pictures every two weeks and I will see how my back will be straight, 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 straight. And it's amazing. Go to my site and see my back. And that was without blocking the back because the, actually the fascia is pulling you. What it's doing is pulling like pulling the shirt. So the minute you open up the rib cage, the, the back gets released, everything gets released and the back the, is, is meant to be aligned. It's not meant to be crooked. So it's going to get aligned with the proper foundation and posture. So that was amazing. And I barely do back, barely. Maybe once in a while that I'm doing some intensive that I do more into the sh shoulder blades, something like that, or, or more to stretch. But then I just do core every day and combine heavily now, very heavy with the legs to make sure that I'm really creating the space. So don't, don't, don't take this like people come and when is it that I'm going to do the back? I said, forget about the back. Now we need to open the rib cage. We need yeah. to make sure everything flows. So that's something that we need to stress to the people. Mm -hmm. um, so we may make sure that we have this openness. Now the biggest testimony, because I love massage. I love people to come in and a nice massage once in a while. The biggest testimony is when I do massage, uh, if people don't know me at all, they, one, one time I was in Miami traveling and this lady came for the massage and when she got into the back, she pulled her hands and she did it three times, went in and pulled her hands and she said, lady, what is it that you do? I never seen ever touch and I've been doing massage for massages for over 30 years. I never touched a fascia so liquid that I could play with it. I could roll in the back and I just started laughing. I said, but block therapy and I ended up giving teaching this lady what is the block therapy i said i've never seen it i can roll it roll it touch it play with it so it's amazing because people that really know about anatomy they just get a kick of how loose how fluid is your fascia just by decompressing the front cage <laughs> i just love the way you describe everything and uh just touching back on the scoliosis piece like is that ever true because if you were to tug on a towel on the corners and you twist one corner of the towel one way and you twist the other corner of the towel the other way, that affects the alignment of the whole towel. And really that's what our limbs are doing on the core. Mm -hmm. So I work with so many people with scoliosis and often, you know, they're going to send me the x-rays of the curve and, and that whole thing. And the reality is, again, that's the issue site of what's going on and what's going on is the limbs are torquing the core in these different directions, causing things to twist. So I've seen people that are um, athletes who are continually doing some kind of a rotation that's, that's adding to this, or people that play an instrument. I um, have worked with uh, a teenage girl who is a violinist. So, you know, that alignment, playing the violin for a number of hours a day, that's going to create a very specific pattern in the fascia. And the reality is it's what we do the majority of the time that adds up over time and creates our posture as we age. So understanding that is also just such a key important piece to really know about the body. It's what are, what are we doing all the time? That's what matters. And that's why, you know, sitting in front of a computer for eight hours a day in the crunched position, that is a huge problem. And I've heard many times they say, 
sitting is the new smoking or is that how it goes? I think so. Yes. Um, And it makes sense because is that damaging because we're, we're so inclined to just sit in front of this machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I mean, what, what is that doing to the organs, to the heart, to the lungs? So um, just jumping in a little bit about right now with uh, the COVID virus, the reality is, is people are having trouble breathing that are getting this. And that's really scary. I mean, I used to have asthma when I was a kid and I was addicted to an inhaler until I started this practice on my own body. And I started to release that scar tissue impacting me. So I've had those scary moments when suddenly it's like, wow, like I can't get a breath and it's terrifying. So I can see how this virus will just terrify people. But when we can get back to opening the rib cage strengthening that muscle, moving the waste out of the body and cleaning the lungs out, that improves the breathing. And it, again, is a game changer for when we're dealing with immune system issues so that we can really keep our internal world as healthy as it can be so that we can overcome what's moving into our system and and impacting our our health in a negative way. So Anything we, else there, Quinn? Well, we, we have some, some questions, which are great here. So I'm just going to read some of these off. I have a 43 degree scoliosis and kyphosis blocking three months now, and there is improvement. How many months before Edna noticed a major change in her condition? Actually, um, if you look at my website, I have a major change that I saw within 12 weeks. I, I found... In terms of relief and pain, immediately, I will say within a week, I was feeling less inflammated and everything. It's just immediately. Right. But if uh, what, one thing, though, is I was very disciplined. So I will be in the block every day. I don't skip a day. I don't skip a day, and it's been three years, almost four years. If I'm really tired because I'm doing something or traveling, I just I do maybe 15 minutes a bed, even, even the belly or maybe the rib cage or the diaphragm. Now, if for the person is asking if you're disciplined enough, just take pictures. It's amazing. I do a power. Mm. I have a PowerPoint presentation, and I just go with every two weeks. Now I do like every two months because it's been almost four years. But then you're gonna you're gonna start seeing the difference, and they're subtle. But then you're when you put one picture in the other, it's amazing. Mm. I wait twelve weeks. You're gonna see major changes. But again, everybody's different. As long as you are following the breath rule, as long as you're flowing what your body system needs and your the guidance, opening the rib cage, working with the feet, rib cage. I have the discipline of doing a core every day, just just rib cage every day. It, I just feel so great breathing, and then I go into whatever work I'm doing. But then it's it's almost uh, I will say within the couple two three months you're gonna see the main difference, and within six months, wow. It depends how, how long you work and, and if you're targeting the root cause. And, and yeah. there's definitely a few things to add to that um, because, well, first of all, I just want to say looking at Edna's before and after photos, well, again, before and present photos because you're, you're constantly improving dramatically and, and they're seriously incredible. Um, so we'll, we'll post those somewhere around here so people can see, but that that's a that's a great answer because yes everybody is going to be slightly different on how fast they're going to notice changes because yeah you could block five minutes a day you could block um 30 minutes once per week you could do an hour and a half class once per week it it all depends on how frequently you're doing and deanna always mentioned a minimum of 15 minutes per day to really stay on top of things but if you have scoliosis or a condition of the spine you're going to want to give your body a little bit more time Um, and, and that's what's like, so Edna, just another question for you, how much time per day, typically, I I know this is going to vary. Would you spend on the block? Okay. I do 15, 20 minutes every day and that's basic stuff. But then this, since I love blocking so much, uh, the 20 minutes turn into an hour. Well, let's be real with you're working, you're doing other stuff. You have children, you have a commitment. So I try to do half hour most of the days twice a week I do a longer session an hour and once a week I do an intensive an hour and a half now that I'm in quarantine I'm doing an hour every day and three hours once a week which is different it's quarantine but I'm doing an hour every day and sun this like this past Sunday I did an intensive in the morning and I and I want to have in three hours in the afternoon 
And by the when I finished in the afternoon, I, it was so funny because my mom is next door, and I look at her and I said, "I don't even know my name." I was so <laughs> relaxed. I said, "What is it with you?" I said, "I haven't taken any pill. Don't think, not even think I'm drinking or anything. I just did in total six hours blocking divided in two sessions, and by seven thirty, I was out at night. I was so relaxed mm -hmm. and everything. But because we're in quarantine, but if you have a routine, back to the question: twenty minutes a day." Once a week, an hour, an hour and a half, you'll be you'll be just fine, perfect. That's that's perfect. Yeah. You know that. I, I do want to add too, though, that with that, again, it comes back again to that cause site discussion because we can spend hours working in the core and the rib cage, and if we don't get to those legs and feet, forearms and hands that are partly torquing that rib cage out of alignment will make progress, but we're not going to get to those root causes and we're not going to get that same um, full body shifting that's required to really see that scoliosis change significantly. So I just wanted to make sure that that was right. Added. Right. And, and a whole other concept too is, is understanding the posture and alignment piece. And are you going to the gym? What kind of exercises are you doing? How are you bending over to pick up things? Like everything comes down to, that whole piece as well and we talk about it a third a third a third one third is the block is creating the space so actually just doing block therapy is releasing that compression and opening up the tissue the second um, component is inflating that space we talk so much about oxygen breathing diaphragmatically so being able to actually feed the cells with the number one essential nutrient our body requires which is oxygen and then the third component is also understanding the concept of proper posture and alignment. So th that that's that's more so the trickier piece uh, because you you have to be conscious of that all the time. And again, we're not going to ever be perfect with this. But if you can just slowly become a little bit more conscious, how am I standing? Am I collapsing when I'm standing? Am I leaning too much on one side? How am I sitting? Am I sitting incorrectly? If you're seated at a desk for four, eight, ten hours a day, you got to be really conscious of how you're positioning yourself because if you're collapsed, then the forces of gravity and what you're applying on yourself are only going to bring back a lot of those issues. So that's why understanding each one of those components are so crucial. And if you're going to the gym right now and you have scoliosis, I would highly recommend taking some time off of going to the gym because there, there's no sense like, trust me, from my experience going to the gym, and I've been training since I've been about 14, 15 years old, if your body is out of alignment, and especially if you have a condition like kyphosis or scoliosis, and you're training, and you're not really conscious of your posture and alignment, you're only going to build yourself further out of alignment. I know that's tough to hear. I know that that's, but that's just how the body works. We have to give the body what it needs in the moment. And you can absolutely start going back to, to implementing things in the gym. And that doesn't mean you can't do any exercise. It's just being conscious of the exercise you're doing, strengthening the, the, the muscles and the fascia in that correct alignment so that you can actually continue with this practice further. And for a lot of people, that's going to help accelerate their progress, blocking and then strengthening. I always like to say, awaken the tissue and then strengthen the tissue um, because I've I've tested both for many years. Should I block before the gym or should I block after the gym? Blocking before I would highly recommend because there's no sense in training when your tissues collapse or your body's collapsed, your tissues cold and frozen and torquing you out of alignment. So uh, again, just keep in mind if you do have scoliosis to, that there are those three factors. The block's creating the, face, the, the space, the breath is inflating the space, and then you have to also understand the proper posture and alignment. And two, with that whole posture piece, that is something that is always going to be something we need to be aware of. And Edna, I loved it because in February, now I've been, I've been doing this work for 20 years. And in February, when we were visiting you in Puerto Rico, we went to a coffee plantation and you took a photo of me standing as I was listening to the gentleman explaining. And then you posted it in the group. And as soon as I see it, I'm like, okay. Here I am standing hyperextended at the knees, completely not doing what I tell people to do all the time. So posture is, again, the hardest thing to integrate, and none of us are going to be perfect 24-7, and that is the reality. It's something to be aware of and to remember as much as you can, and the more you do it, the more your body lets you know, but 
we don't have to be perfect to make changes by any stretch. It's just, it is the harder piece to bring in because it's about creating proper habits. So the more we can create those proper habits, the easier it is to integrate. And then we continue to make positive changes along the way. Sure. A few tips for people that might think this, uh, they don't have time or their, their time and constraints. There are little things that you can do during the day to remind yourself and your body and create a new habits with posture. I loved uh, uh, brushing my teeth or even drying my hair with the block in the abductors the, in the higher side. So I root and I just plant my feet and look at my knees are aligned and I do my hair. So that may be only seven, eight minutes now that I have my hair short. But those seven minutes are very, very important, especially if I'm going to go into the car and drive because I already make sure that I warm up doctors, my pelvis is already online, I'm, I'm grounded, I'm rooted, and then I jump in the car. Those five minutes are perfect. And I drive with my block, block and under the abductors, so I could go and make sure that I'm aligned and I'm not moving around or tilting. So a few things you can do, even if you're not, you're sitting in the passenger seat and somebody's driving, driving, just bring your block along, do abductors, play with the block. And if you're not, we're not flying that much, but you're, if you're traveling, just do that. There's so many ways you can take benefits of the block, especially if you're in the go. So don't think you have to be like really scheduled to the half hour, the 20 minutes, just find this five minutes here, seven minutes there. You're making a really good uh, habit and you're feeding yourselves and you're going to see the benefits quick enough. Even placing that block just behind you when you're sitting in front exactly. of the computer, it keeps yeah. you seated upright to really avoid that collapse that we all sure. naturally fall into when we're sitting for so long. So yeah, that, that's a great point, Edna. We can add that practice into what we're already doing so we don't have to take more time out of our day to integrate some of these changes into the body. We have a couple more comments here. Um, not necessarily questions, but these are great. I had constant nonstop migraines most of the 55 years prior to my discovery of block. Now a migraine free block on. So again, there's another testimonial fully migraine free. That's incredible. Oh, wow. um, the body is a complete system. It needs TLC to maintain its flow block provides flow. And then um, the gentleman, Danny, who asked the question about the 45 degree scoliosis uh, curve and kyphosis, he said, thank you on the block um, over one hour every day. So that's, again, that's fantastic that you can dedicate a full hour um, and then just also being conscious of your posture and your alignment. So awesome, guys. Great, great. And something that I just came to realize, um, it's not about reaching the goal. It's about learning in the process, learning about your body, enjoying how you feel free, how you can breathe more freely, how your, your legs move, how your spine. And when we allow ourselves to be conscious about those beautiful changes, we're healing our souls, we're healing our mind, we're healing our bodies. So this is a practice, it's not only physically. Because the fascia holds patterns of, of thoughts, the fascia holds memories. And now with all these changes, we're under a lot of tension, a lot of uh, unknowns, questions, we're going to get pressured. So we need, we need to make sure that we keep our liver cleanse, um, all these um, emotions that are driving negative thoughts. The block is excellent because it keeps the flow. It keeps us being healthy. And the, the more we breathe, the more benefits we're going to achieve. So this is a crucial time for us to be at the block and teach others. I thought I was not going to be able to teach in this quarantine, and it's when I'm teaching the most. I'm teaching four times a week in a virtual mode, something that I wanted to do and I never got around or I had the excuse of not having the time. So I'm doing that and I'm just, and I'm selling blocks to people need something. They need the tool. They need to become their own health advocate. So it's more about the physical. It's just the whole thing, the whole well-being. Do, do, do. I, this might be another comment from Kat. Hey there, Kat. Totally agree, Quinn. I love blocking and training core, stretch and lays and relax on block after. I sleep on the block, brush my teeth, stepping and <laughs> balancing on it too. Love it. Again, that's incredible. And that's what's so unique about block therapy as well is you can literally bring it anywhere and everywhere. Be as creative as you want with it. I know a lot of people will literally like cook in the kitchen with the block between their thighs. People will have the block with them. They'll take it to work. Um, what you guys mentioned about putting the block on your back, that's phenomenal because 
you, you won't let the block fall. If you lean forward, the block's going to fall. So it's going to help you stay up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and open you up. So, uh, that's really, that's really great. And I love that feedback because yeah, you can be creative with it. You can bring it pretty well anywhere and everywhere. A lot of people bring it on airplanes as well. I know we can't fly right now, but, um, even the baby block, a lot of people love bringing the baby block. Whenever Deanna and I travel, we always have a baby block on us on the plane. And then we have our block buddy in our suitcase. Um, I'm just going to look here. One other finding little blocks of time during the day to do the block is important. No excuses. LOL. Fantastic. And that's another thing. We don't have to block for an hour. We can block for sure. 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes. And yeah. it, it continues to add up. The more time we put into mm -hmm. the body, the more time we take out of the body. And ultimately, that's what we want to do. We want to create space. So there's a time-space continuum. Gravity is constantly compressing us over time. We get shorter and wider. As we put that space back into the body, we literally are taking time out of the body. So just leave you with that thought. <laughs> I love it. Last words and anything you'd like to share before we wrap this up? Um, yes, one thing is just be aware of healing crisis. Don't be afraid of them because as your body starts cleaning, you're going to get all sort of things from rashes or maybe um, I, my words, uh, healing crisis are being nightmares, which, which is great because I'm, I know I'm just uh, releasing all those emotions or memories that maybe they were held back in the subconscious level. So just don't be afraid of it. Your body is cleaning, your mind is cleaning, your soul is refreshing. So just be aware you're, this is a journey. This is a beautiful journey and I'm so happy and blessed to be at and I'm just here. So anybody has a questions, just look up into my website or if they want to text me some information about scoliosis and on my journey, I'm more than happy to assist you all. Uh, thank you so much, Edna. Mm -hmm. That was just a fantastic discussion. As always, such a pleasure. Thank you, Quinn. And if there's no other comments or questions, Quinn, I think we can wrap this up. Awesome. Well, again, thank you all for joining into this episode of Discussions with the Fashion Master. Thank you, Deanna. Thank you, Edna. This has been fantastic. And we will see all of you next week. Same time, same place, and have a fantastic day. Great. Great. Thank believe, you, everyone.